Hey, hello everybody. Welcome to the sound test room. Okay, so today we're taking a look at iFretless Bass uh, and basically how to set it up to get the absolute best uh, sound for it, depending on your playing environment or, or what you do. So it uses the accelerometer. The ex I can't, I can't never say that word, accelerometer. It, it uses the accelerometer inside the iPad to trigger the samples, it, to, to sense the force that you're playing the iPad. Okay, so. So ideally, you want the iPad to have some sort of free movement and in the, an I complete ideal playing situation, you wanna be holding the iPad with your left or right hand and. And then you'll get the best like response from the uh, from the force that you use to touch the iPad. Now, obviously, if you're now, I find this is weird. I found uh, if you're a right hand, most guitarists are right handed. Now, I'm left handed, but I play guitar right handed because I was never shown any other way. So I find it really easy to hold the iPad in my right hand and and play it like a guitar, but if I'm playing lead on the keyboard, I, I prefer to use it, it's weird. Anyway, but you can obviously hold it in this hand. If you're a right-handed guitarist, naturally you're gonna to wanna to pick this up like this and maybe play it like that. But uh, it's gonna be a little bit counterintuitive at first because your rhythm and your melody are all being played with one hand, whereas on a guitar it's slightly different, but hey, uh, you know. Okay, so that's the that. So if you, like I said, if you can't hold the iPad, place it on something a little bit, you know, a little, with a little bit of give. This is on a, a small cushion and, you know, it's a give, allowing movement. It's allowing movement of your device. All right, so, I mean, if you, if you have to place it on a hard surface, Okay, there is a, uh, in the settings, let's go into settings now. If you need to place this on a hard surface, there's touch force sensitivity here. You can adjust that. Now at maximum setting here, it's gonna be a lot less sensitive, okay? So you may need to adjust this to suit now, when you're in edit, when you're in like this mode, the menu mode here, you will be able to scale up and down for the 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 actual fret, and you can set the number of frets. At the moment, it's set on eight. We could set it on seven this way, fret sort of thing. Let's leave it on. Let's leave frets on eight, and then number of strings you can set to up to let's see 14 well that would be quite the quite the look on the screen there um and way too much for me so i'm going to leave that set on seven as well so the system for midi transpose not important touch sensitivity we've gone through that is if it's on a hard surface maybe you're on a gig and you it's gonna be on a hard surface isn't it you know you're going to want it to be solid and not move around. Well, there's your touch sensitivity. There is, but you know you need to set that to suit, depending on the surface. But if you're on a softer surface, it's cool beans. So let's move in, move down now. If we go further down here, let's see. Now, let's go back up here. Now these, sample velocity range and volume range, these are super important. Okay, these are the, what you're gonna get the absolute best out of iFretless by using So let's choose a different preset now. Let's choose clean pickup. And you can see that we've left our touch sensitivity central. Uh, you get an EQ as well. And each, like I said, each sample has been sampled about nine times. Each string has been plucked about nine times to get the samples. Now, sample velocity range. Okay, so for some situations, like I've just moved that back to full. You're gonna find that maybe it's a little bit too much. 
you know, when you're playing, especially if you're holding it maybe or it's on a hard surface. That's the kind of thing you don't want. If we reduce the sample velocity range from the top, we're going to take off the harder, like higher, you know, the loudest samples. We can move it down here. So if we move it down even further, you, you're just not going to get those harsh samples. So I know that some people have said, you know, you know, if I hit it too hard, it's going to go bang like that. I don't want that. Just move that down a little bit until the hardest point you hit is you're happy with it. Now it's the same for the other the other way as well. If you're thinking, well, I'm, it's too soft, you know, or I'm get I'm not getting that kind of I'm getting a, a difference in tone too much. Move your sample. This will take off the the, the quietest samples. So even if you and if you if you move it right in like this, you kind of only can play in one or two. Okay, so that's that. You can leave that the way it was. Volume range is the same, you but except that sometimes the the volume will be too loud. Or well, if we move our top end volume range down, whatever we do, we're not gonna go over a certain volume. So you might like to set it like that and have the harsher samples input at a quieter volume. Okay, or we can go the other way as well. We can move our volume range and we think, well, it's too quiet there. So let's just, I mean, and that, that's extreme, of course, because what you're seeing there is all the lower volume sample ranges have been taken out. So you're only, you know, but that may be a, that may be absolutely ideal for you. You know, you may want to say it's like a, it's like compression, if you like. It's you you'll get more of a, an equal volume, but at the cost of you know less dynamic expression, if you like. So if you if you're playing in something that's relatively loud or or, or a band situation, something like that, uh, maybe not so loud, but. And you're not going to make any mistakes there. So if we close that now, we're going to be. Such a marvelous sounding instrument. But when you suss out how to, you know, the volume range, velocity range, fantastic. Um, also, like I said down here, your touch force sensitivity, that's really handy, you know, because. All these things give your the, give the realism to the actual playing now it, you might notice as well if you scroll further down here around um velocity response curve will have nothing at all to do with what goes on here that's purely now if you've midi this up to uh, a, 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 another instrument, which obviously I'll, I'll, I will cover in another video as well. I'm going to do a video about midi it up to different instruments and things. That's only for that because that may be now, if you've got the actual internal sound muted, you might want to adjust the velocity response curve, which will affect how uh, iFretless plays your um, other synth or instruments, if you like. So guys, there you go. That basically covers the, the, the way it works. So it works by sensing the force, the accelerometer inside the iPad senses the force at which you hit the screen. Okay, basically. But we'll try another, reset that from our thingies. So if I, and you've got some synth sounds here. So aggressive fretless, for instance, you'll see the volume range and sample range are pretty high up at full, full range. Can just make some adjustments to suit 
And this way, you can set us. You can set up iFritless for your gig or whatever, or your or whatever you're recording to it. So it 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 responds and behaves exactly the way you need it to when you're recording or or, or at a gig. Listen, guys, I've put obviously put links for iFretless in the description below. Um, thanks for watching. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. I hope this gets helps you understand a little bit. I mean, all the rest of it's kind of self-explanatory. Reverb, you know, you can vibrato sort of thing. But the most important things, you know, are your depending on your work surface sort of thing, or your touch for sensitivity and your volume range and sample velocity range. So you say, like, you've got nine samples, take it down to there, you're probably getting about seven. Oh. Take the lower samples away. You're sacrificing some dynamic range now, but you're more likely to get an even response, however you play it, sort of thing. So that's kind of how that works. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later.